Hello, this is Brandon Haston on Pseudo Game Dev, and this video is part two in Let's Make a Game with Unity 4. And I'm making an isometric two dimensional role playing game. And today we're covering prefabs, as I mentioned in my last video, which covered setting up this isometric camera view that we've got going on here. As you can see, I've Got a scene called prefabs. I've set up some cubes with cubes, oh, rectangular prisms on top to make what should be considered a fence. And if I go ahead and play this real quick, you'll see kind of sort of looks like a fence, I guess, if you are creative and use your imagination here. And right now, let's say I just really don't like where these fence posts are. So let's go ahead and move these things. And I've kind of already cheated because I tried recording this video once and messed up pretty badly and just tripped up over my words and got lost in what I was saying. So 0 0.375 was the magic number to get to the edge and get flush with the side here. And I want to do this with each Oops, each and every single one. You can tell this is going to take a while. So let's take a shortcut and make this fence post into a prefab. And we'll do that pretty easily. Let me get rid of a couple of these things. Figure out which is which. Here we go. And the cool thing about prefabs is that I can have a clone of this thing. I can copy and paste this prefab all over the place. And if I change the prefab itself, each instance of that prefab, all the clones, they all get updated with the change. So it saves me a lot of time and work. So enough talking, let's get on to the prefabs here. I've made a folder called prefabs in my assets already. and all I'm going to do is right click here, go to create, and then prefab. Awesome. We have a prefab. It's empty, you can see, because we've got this kind of grayed out little box. Let's give it a name. Fence post seems to be the logical name for a fence post. And you can see that we don't really have anything in our prefab. So let's go ahead and turn these two guys into the prefab. All I gotta do is grab the parent object here and drag it onto the prefab, the empty box here. And there you go. You can see this picture of our weird little fence post shows up and we can drag that into our scene. And let me align the camera view have our prefab and we can move that over. Now we have fences. If I can move that. Cool deal. So now that I have these fences and all prefabs, let's say I can't make up my mind and I decide that the fence post would look better back in the center of our tile cube thing. Let's go ahead and make that change. Let me grab a hold of the fence post itself, revert that back to the center, and then over here we have this prefab. We have a couple buttons, three buttons here, and I'm going to click apply, and you can see all the copies have updated with the new info. So now that we have it where we can edit just the prefab and have all the changes be duplicated or replicated across all the instances of the prefab, what if we want to exclude some of these prefabs? Let's say the corner, because we want the corner of our fence to be special 
Um, it's slightly different. It can't really tile in either direction. It's got to join two sides together. So the way we would do that to make it so this this prefab instance isn't part of the group anymore is we would select it as I've done here, go to game object and break prefab instance. You can see the color has changed actually here. All the instances of the prefabs are dark blue and the instance we just broke is now black like our point light camera target. So it's just its own little single thing off by itself. So let's click one of these prefabs and make a change. Let's just grab the fence and just move it wherever and apply it. That's kind of a bad example. You can't really see it here, but this fence post hasn't changed at all. So let's move that back and apply it. I think a good example would be to move this like out here. And you can see our little corner fence post remains the same. That's the end of this video. In the next video, I am going to cover, let's see materials. I think that'll be a nice point to move on to. Textures and materials. So we can start actually having something to look at other than this boring gray world. Hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you next time.